Hey everybody, it's episode 189 of PodQuest. Not enough episodes. No, never <laughs> enough. It's Tuesday, April 10th, 2018, and I am Chris. With me is Drew. Hi. Walnut decided to just take the day off for walnut reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just the two of us. Yep. Talking about stuff and things, news mostly. There's a lot of news this week. Uh, but as always, you can always reach us by sending us an email at social at one-quest.com. Or if you're so inclined, you can help us out and support us over at patreon.com slash one quest. Yeah. Every little bit helps and every little bit can help us get more content out on a regular basis. Yep. Anyway, enough begging. How about news? Sure. Stuff happened. A little bit. I, I found a bunch of stuff. Um, there was some comic book related stuff that I'm just going to like run through real quick because okay. you're not going to care so much. Yeah, probably not. Um, one, DC is going to launch a new Catwoman series. Okay. Um, which like there was one that ran for a good chunk of the new 52, uh, but people seem to never really like it. And I don't know if it was just bad storytelling or uninteresting plots, like, but, uh, her and Batman are getting married. Oh, okay. Sure. Soon-ish. I think it's issue 50 they get married, and they're on, like, 43, 44 right now. All right. Uh, so they, th- this has been, like, a thing. Like, they got engaged, like, a year ago, and, like, they've just been playing it out slowly through the comics, like, them dealing with stuff, them telling other superheroes about it, shit like that. Um, so what's going to go wrong? Well, apparently, <laughs> apparently, the storyline after that is uh, the Joker is coming for them because he didn't get an invitation to the wedding. Okay. So there's that. Um, but yeah, this actually, with what they've been doing with that character, I'm just, I'm curious to see kind of what happens there. Yeah. And apparently the first arc is going to be there. there's a copycat cat woman out there pulling crimes that she is trying to track down. Basically, so like her name isn't like drugged through the mud anymore than it already has been. Sure, sure. Because uh, early in the the current, so the current run of Batman, like the, the uh, Tom King's run, mm-hmm. um, he established that Catwoman was in Arkham for murdering like forty some odd people, maybe more. It might have been more. Um, and a- as like the first couple of arcs play out, you actually find out that she didn't kill anybody. She just took the blame for one like somebody that she was close with murdering a bunch of child trafficking like rapists. Oh, so like kind of a justifiable murder. Yeah, sure. <laughs> But, like, still as far as, like, laws and courts are concerned, murder. Uh-huh. Uh, but they've kind of wrapped that up and come to... She's not a wanted criminal at the moment. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so there's that. And then uh, other DC-related stuff. They are finally going to explore the whole three Jokers thing. I don't know if you... I remember... Ta- I know I talked about this, like, once. Um, it might have been one of those episodes you weren't around for. Maybe. Um, I want to say... it's It's been, like, three fucking years. It was like during the Dark Side War stuff, uh, Batman got hold of um, what's called the Mobius chair, okay. which basically lets him know any everything and be everywhere. Fun. And he used that and found out who the Joker's identity is. Oh. And then it was like a year after that, they told us that there were actually three Jokers. Sure, why not? So like... It was, and it was like this weird, like stinger at the end of a comic of Batman going like, "Oh, it's not just one person; it's three people." Huh. And they're finally going to tell that story. Um, and it's Jeff Johns doing it, who he writes all the good DC books at this point. Okay, like he's kind of like the guy where if DC needs like if they have a big story they want to tell or something like that, it's usually him to do it. All right. Um, he's also brought back most of, like, the legacy of heroes. Like, he brought back Hal Jordan as a Green Lantern. All right, okay. He brought back, uh, Barry Allen as the Flash, mm-hmm. like, stuff like that. Um, and then the, the weirdest, and it's kind of comic book adjacent. Okay. Uh, apparently Stan Lee had his blood stolen. Oh, yeah, I saw this headline and didn't look into Allegedly. it. Allegedly. Right. It, it hasn't been confirmed, but yeah, apparently his blood was stolen and then used to sign and sell comics in yeah. Vegas. <laughs> Well, it's kind of, it's one of those, um, it's like, I think it was Kiss had a comic book in the 90s or 80s that were, where they all, like, gave a sample of their blood and it got mixed in with the ink. Okay. And then, like, that book is literally pr- printed with the blood of Kiss. Um, it's a similar thing where they took the blood samples, um, worked it with an ink solvent, basically. And then this guy was using a stamp of Stanley's signature to stamp comics and sell them. Apparently, they were selling for like 500 bucks a pop. 
And it wasn't even like Stan Lee comic. It was like an issue of Thor 700 that came out a couple months ago. Oh. Like characters that he like had a hand in creating, mm-hmm. but not books that he worked on in any way. And it just, it's adding to the whole, he is not in a good place right now. Yeah. Thing. Which I know, um, Todd, Todd McFarlane, who he is the, uh, he is one of the, the heads of Image Comics. Yeah. So, I mean, didn't he create it? One, he's one of the guys. Yeah. Okay. That it was like five of them. Oh, okay. Uh, Jim Lee, who's like a, a DC artist, was actually okay. Or like, right. He is actually co-publisher at DC. Was also one of the like five or six co-founders. Okay. Um, because they all left Marvel. I think they all actually all left Marvel in like 1990 or 1991 and started their own thing because they were unhappy with the creative control and not right. getting rights to characters they created and the pay and all that stuff. But he like he created Spawn and stuff. But he's apparently really good friends with Stan. Oh. And he actually posted on Facebook a couple, maybe like a week ago, that he was, uh, he went, he actually got, went to his house to like visit with him and that like, he seems like a 95 year old guy. Like, yeah. <laughs> but it's just like, there's this weird like shroud of secrecy around it all. Cause like the people that used to take care of him aren't anymore. And yeah. like these other people are now doing it and they just don't seem to have, like, apparently they brought him out to some sort of convention this past weekend. Wow. Really? Yeah. And like, Apparently, he was so out of it, like, he wasn't even, like, able to sign things correctly. He was just kind of, like, scribbling onto, like, books and all. And, like, like if if that's just fucked up. Yeah. Like, in the worst possible ways. Yeah, definitely. Especially because, like, he lost his wife less than a year ago. Like, his wife passed away last summer. Well, I felt like it was longer than that, but... No, I'm pretty sure it was just last summer. Hmm. Um, so, like, I mean, he's dealing with that. He's 95 years old. And, like, just let the guy be in peace. Mm-hmm. Stop, yeah. tr- tr- stop trying to make a quick buck off his name yes yeah. um but like moving away from that to stuff that maybe you actually have something to <laughs> to, to actually like have a say about. a little more comment on um there was some movie tv stuff which some of these you're not going to care about at all because you don't watch it um but toy story 4 has a release date confirmed oh it's actually going to be in 2019 oh. so it's just next year okay. which is crazy um i mean it's a it's a pixar movie so yeah. it's june 21st 2019 which is kind of like their normal window. But is Incredibles 2 this year? Then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Incredibles 2 is this year. But uh, I kind of thought Toy Story 4 would get knocked back a little bit because um, the team that uh, Rashida Jones and whoever she was writing with left hmm. a few months ago. Um, I guess they're still on track for that, though. Must be. Which, I mean, good, definitely. Because to- those Toy Story movies have always been good. Mm-hmm. Like, none of them have actually been bad, and four was fucking depressing as hell. Or three. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, three. I was staring at a big number four on my screen. Um, They're moving away from sequels after that, didn't they say at one point? Or I mean, I hope so. I know they they moved away from sequels for the most part for quite a while. Because, I, I mean, what between Toy Story 2 and Cars 2, there weren't, weren't any sequels, and that was yeah. probably close to ten years. So I think Toy Story 2 was, like, 2002, and Cars 2 was, like, 2011. Right? Those dates sound probably right. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm actually looking at Toy Story now. I had cars right. Oh, no. Fuck. Toy Story 2, 1999. Fuck. <laughs> Way older than I realized. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Toy, Toy we Story 2. You were still in elementary school when Toy Story 2 came Jesus. out. Jesus. Of middle school. Well, all right. Fair. Middle school. I mean, I was in middle school. Yeah, you were yeah. technically still in elementary school. Well, the Fucking same building. Yeah. You're a child. <laughs> We but were in seventh grade, car, <laughs> maybe car, eighth, depending when in the year. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, Cars two was two thousand eleven though. Okay, which I'm for somebody who has never seen anything beyond the first Cars movie, that's impressive. I was able to guess that date. I'm just gonna give myself a little credit yeah. for that one. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what a new Toy Story might be. Yeah, I wonder what they're gonna do. I mean, they're not gonna have Andy. It's gonna be that little girl from the end of the movie. True. Um. Colton Haynes from Arrow is going to be back on Arrow. Okay. Um, he was Arsenal, Red Arrow, Roy oh, Harper. Okay. All right. Uh, he left at the end of the third season, hmm. so he's really only on it for like two seasons, season and a half, something like that. All right. But he's had like sporadic appearances since then. Um, he went into hiding at the end of the third season because he outed himself as the Green Arrow to protect the actual Green Arrow's identity. Um, and he's just kind of been on the run since then. But like every so often, he pops up for one reason or another. He 
that pop up just happened like two episodes ago. Like it was ah. a two episode arc. He ends up leaving town again, but he leaves with Oliver's sister, who had taken over the Red Arrow ar- okay. Arsenal name. Um, but yeah, apparently next season he is going to be a series regular again. So something's probably going to go wrong between him and the sister. Yeah, because it they they didn't just like leave to go like start a life together. They left because um she has to go find some shit to like stop the League of Assassins, I think, maybe. I forget. It hasn't been a great season. The the, the, the most recent episode was good. Okay. It, it was mostly good because of, like, confrontations between main characters, like, them just, like, yelling at each other like people would do. Um, especially people in, like, those situations. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that's that's actually kind of cool. Um, he was always fun to watch on those shows. Uh, Preacher. Which have you ever watched? No, Preacher? I've I've heard good things. You guys might like it. Yeah, it, it's a weird show, and the first the first season and second season are really different. Okay. Um, but it, it's a it's a really cool show, and it, it third season is going to be starting up soon ish, which is actually what this is about. Um, AMC announced the release date for or the premiere date for season three. Okay, it's going to be Sunday, June twenty fourth. So I think that'll probably be at like the tail end of. The first half of um, Fear the Walking Dead. Because they usually split Fear the Walking Dead. It runs from, like, where Walking Dead ends to, like, end of June, early July. And then it's off until, like, end of August. And then it runs right up until um, Walking Dead returns in the fall. So, like, every year there's, like, three months without some sort of Walking Dead. It's, like, two and a half over the summer and two and a half over the winter. Yeah. Uh, But I'm looking forward to that show coming back because it just keeps getting fucking weirder and weirder and weirder. All right. Like in the last one, you get to f- you find the the descendant of Jesus. <laughs> All right. Yeah, like it, it's it's super weird. <laughs> um, but he is he's basically a Neanderthal. Like that's kind of like how they like made him look like long, kind of like matty hair, like big, thick, protruding unibrow. <laughs> doesn't really understand like language or anything. But it, apparently, it's like his genes are just so inbred by the time they got to him that he's just <laughs> broken in every way. And that's that's the kind of show Preacher is. <laughs> All right. Um. What else was there? Have you ever heard of Why the Last Man? I've heard the name, but... It's a really popular graphic novel. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess it's technically a comic series because it's a few volumes. Sure. Um. But it just got ordered by FX for a pilot. Hmm. Which, that would be the third show that Brian K. Vaughn has gotten on television, technically. It's weird to hear Fox announcing anything right now why do you say that uh oh because of the disney thing because yeah the disney sale hasn't actually happened yet right and everything could they could announce everything they want and then disney goes nah never mind do do they lose fx though i thought they kept fx no the only thing they keep are fox sports and fox news okay yeah, I, I knew that. I knew they kept something out of the television. I'm, I'm pretty bracket. sure. Uh, well, and the broadcast stations. Yeah, but FX, FXX, and the regional Fox Sports station are supposedly going to Disney. Or yeah, to Disney. And I mean, at the same time, like announcing stuff is probably the right way to go because if the sale falls through, you don't, they don't want to be left without anything. And at least this keeps rights in their side. So, yeah. Like yeah, Disney might get those rights in the long run, but. They're at least not going to sit on them, lose them, and then not have any shows in the new season. That's fair. Um, but yeah, Brian K. Th- I think this will be. This is technically his third show that he has gotten on the air. <laughs> so he has Runaways, which is on Hulu. Right. That's based off of a Marvel comic he did. He's now he's got Why the Last Man, which is off of another comic series he created. And then I believe he was the. I believe he was heavily involved in getting Under the Dome, which is based on a Stephen King book. So like not something he did. But I would say he was like a right, like a head writer for it, or like an executive, like some something relatively important to get that show off the ground. And I know he wrote for Lost also, but that was kind of like in the middle of the series. He didn't he didn't launch that show. Um, but yeah, I'd be interesting interested to see how FX would even do that because mm-hmm. it's one of those it's um it's a post apocalyptic world and it's just it's one man and his pet monkey. And I think. I believe the way it works out is literally him and the monkey are the last two, like, male, like, mammals alive. <laughs> yeah. Um, Amazon. So th- they've been doing more with their uh, their original series and stuff. They're 
apparently they're committing to five seasons of a Lord of the Rings television series. Jesus. Yeah, five season commitment up front before anything has even been made. And like, I get, I get that people are super big on the Lord of the Rings. I, I don't understand why because it's a really fucking bad series. Like, maybe the books are different. I've never been able to get through them. But like, the movies are bad. They're overlong. The acting's not great in most of them. Like, they're just they're bad. Uh I don't know. I like the Lord of the Rings movies. I, I they are incredibly long. They're but... really long, and like I don't know, like nothing really happens in most of them. Like there's like two, there's like the two battles and the the two towers and Return of the King. Like that's sort of the action. And like it's not that I need a bunch of big set piece action scenes, but I just need something to be compelling. And most of that movie's not compelling. Like it's Frodo and Sam wandering around crying. Yeah. Uh but yeah, I mean, f- five seasons of it. That's that's kind of like that when when uh, FX did that with Charlie Sheen after he uh, had his breakdown and came back to TV. Right. And like, I think they did two seasons of his show, and then they just syndicated it for a hundred. Like, they just signed off for a hundred episodes so they could hit syndication. It's like, yeah, I, I guess that's one way that you can make television. Just <laughs> just throw money at it until somebody. Just- just make all 100 episodes right away and then hope that you can sell the rights of the syndication to other networks. Mm-hmm. Um, the last thing, or the last uh, TV re- movie related thing, The Rock might not be in Fast and Furious 9. Interesting. Uh, him and Vin Diesel, not friends. It's kind of surprising. Uh, apparently, they just have very different work ethics. And I don't know if you remember, like, a while ago, there was, like, like the whole news of, like, their feud was coming out. No, uh, maybe. This was like, I think this was like late last, or not late last year, but like mid last year, like right around, probably like right after the last movie came out. Um, like The Rock had like tweeted something about him, but like didn't drop his name. <laughs> but like the, there was apparently confrontations and stuff like that, and like they wouldn't they wouldn't be in the same room together, sort of crap. And then I know uh, Tyrese had a bunch of issue with The Rock at one point too, because The Rock and Jason Statham were getting their own movie. Oh, <laughs> and like. That's literally Tyrese's only paycheck. Yeah. So. But, like, the funny thing is, like, Vin Diesel apparently, like, stepped in between that and, like, made both sides, like, come to terms, essentially. <laughs> but, yeah, apparently The Rock and Diesel just don't get along to the point where they sh- they didn't film any scenes together for Fate of the Furious. Oh, wow. There are scenes, there are scenes where they are together, like, as far as the movie's concerned, but they were not filmed at the same time. Huh. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, movies are weird. Like, it's nuts that they can do that, and just, like, by the magic of editing, yeah. all of a sudden these two characters yeah, are having a conversation and fighting each other. Mm-hmm. Um, the Rock is hosting HQ tomorrow night. Really? Yeah. Uh, For, uh, the Rampage is sponsoring oh, wow. the game tomorrow night. They're giving away $300,000. Nice. I'll have to actually play that one. Yeah. So I usually play on, like, Sunday nights when yeah. it's, like, the bigger jackpot, or if there's, like... There was a Nike one a couple weeks ago. Yeah. It was kind of late. Like, I, th- I think that was at like 10 p.m. on a Sunday. It was after their normal Sunday game. Yeah, it might have been. And it, it was late, but they were giving away like 100 grand. Yeah. And and a pair of like a special pair of sneakers. The special, yeah. Um, and like it, it, uh, it was it ended up being like five people won. And it was um like they all got like 20 like, grand. Yeah. Plus a pair of sh- like five of a kind shoes yeah. basically actually mm-hmm. i think he said there was like 13 pairs of the shoes made. yeah something like that and i know that i want to say it was like that 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 same week it might have been they did another really big jack uh, i think the wednesday they did two hundred and fifty thousand. yeah for uh ready player one yeah sponsored that yeah that one. was it and I, I i i played that one and it just it literally it it locked up while I was trying to select an answer. Nice. And then I didn't get to select an answer and lost. Yep. So, and it's a shame because like I probably would have lost around question like seven. Um, but there, there's still that chance that like I would have just, I would have guessed Randomly differently. Randomly guessed it. Yeah. Cause like when I was looking at it, I'm like, I have no idea what this is. And I didn't even like at that point, like I don't keep, cause I, wa- I watched the whole thing play through just to see. Mm-hmm. And it was like two questions I just wasn't sure about, but I like I didn't even bother like taking a guess at them because I'm like, there's no sense. And if I got through all this and found out that like I would have guessed all of these questions right, I'm gonna be really angry. So I mean, it's one thing to be like, oh well, I would I might have guessed that. It's another thing to be like, oh I got that one wrong. Oh I know the next one, and then the next, no for sure the answer. Yeah, to it. And it's like, uh, yeah, yeah. I've gotten to like nine question nine, go out on question nine, and then no ten, eleven, and twelve. Yeah, that's the worst. 
But those are often the times where it's like, oh, well, like, 9,000 people won. I, I lost out on, like, a dollar, not even a dollar, whatever. It's a, it's still, like, that nice, nice yeah. feeling to win, though. True. And, like, mo- like, I get plenty of questions wrong, but a lot of times, like, the really good prizes, it's usually not a wrong answer. It's usually the app fucking up. Hmm. Yeah. And, like, I'm sure I would get one wrong eventually. Like, there's no way I'm going to get 15 of those questions right in a row. Mm-hmm. But it's still, you know, to get the one wrong because, like, the app was messed up and it just wasn't, like, it either locked up or it wasn't accepting the right input or I hit, like, A and it picked C for whatever reason. It just sucks. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, th- there there was a little video game news. Yeah. Um. So, Spyro Reignited Trilogy officially announced. Yep. Um. Were you a Spyro fan? I pl- now I'm wondering if I ever actually played the game or only ever played demos. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if I ever actually played Spyro. They were fun. Yeah, they were. They I always found them more fun than the uh and the Crash games, and I really like the Crash games. But they were like they were more open than the okay. like because the Crash games were generally like either like side scrolling yeah. or run forward or run backwards. Mm-hmm. Um, these were just kind of big open areas, right? And it was. I don't know. It, it always kind of had like the right kind kind of humor. I remember the commercials were always good because it was like he was running around sending sheep on fire. Yeah, I remember like, those. that. That was a big thing because that's how you got your life back. Right. Because your your firefly was your your life meter, and he had like three different colors and then went away. Okay. So if you every time you killed a sheep, it would turn into a butterfly, and the firefly would eat one of the butterflies and then get one more like hit point back. Okay. Um. Or I believe if you just didn't have him at all, killing one would spawn him again um but yeah so that has a release date and everything and it's official uh september 21st okay and it's gonna be on xbox so uh, um crash launched i think only on playstation right it's going to everything but it launched exclusively to playstation spyro is just going right to both switch did they say you know what i don't think there has been any switch confirmation interesting yeah there is a cool thing though if you um if you have the the Crash Insane Trilogy, mm-hmm. and you put in the Konami code, it unlocks the trailer for Spyro. Oh. Well, almost the Konami code. It's up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, square. Okay. Because there's no BA. Mm-hmm. And I guess on on PlayStation, actually, neither of them actually have a start button anymore. True. Um, And actually did, um, that might only work on PlayStation 4. Because I don't know if um X would actually... I wonder if they actually just use B. <laughs> if they do do BA... And actually, I think B would be where the square is. Did, uh, I have an Xbox no. controller. Yes. So B's on the outside, X is on the inside. Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. so is X. Yeah. Okay. I, every one of these fucking controllers has a different layout. Yep. Like, I felt like Erica started play, Um, I, I bought her uh, Skyrim for the Switch because she kept okay. saying she wanted to try Skyrim. Mm-hmm. And she started playing it, and, uh, and she, every time she's, like, going in the menus and stuff, like, out of habit, she's hitting B because... On the PlayStation, that's where X is. Right. So she's hitting that to accept, and it keeps backing out of things. And then she has to go back in, and... Like, I watched her do it, like, four or five times while she was playing on the TV the first night. That's so, Nintendo's problem. For oh, yeah. having the bottom button be back. Yeah. And not accept. I mean, that used to be PlayStation with, like, super Japanese games, too. Look at, like, yeah, yeah. Final Fantasy VII was yeah. like that. Because it just makes sense. Circle, accept, square, cancel. Oh. X cancel. Yeah, what did I just say? Square. Yeah, fuck. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm actually excited to to play Spyro again. Yeah, it'll be because neat to see how those look. They actually have you not seen the trailer? No, I so did not. They they same. They look just as good as like Crash did. Like, cool. er, everything is super well done, or at least it looks really well done. Who knows how it's going to actually play? It is not the same studio that's re- doing the remake. Oh, who's doing this um, one? This one is... That's the wrong tab. Toys for Bob. Oh. Who I've never heard of. They're apparently a... um, They're Skylanders devs. Ah. Uh, and I, I'm assuming they're like an internal Activision team. Sure. But, hey, that toys make sense for what they've done before. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's going to be all three Spyro games too. So Spyro, Ripto's Rage, and You're the Dragon. You're the Dragon, I think, is the one that I'm least fond of, because that was the one where it, like, added all the weird other characters that you had to, like, occasionally play as. And it's not so much that those characters were bad, it's just I didn't really want to play as, like, a mole going through tunnels. It was kind of like, eh. Uh, the first two were really good, though. Um, there's also this Lawbreakers stuff. Yeah. Boss Key has, uh, 
Bosky Productions, which is Cliffy B's yep. company, uh, they basically came out early early this week or late last week and said uh, Lawbreakers did not get the uh, the crowd they wanted. It in sure did not. Any stretch of the imagination, and they just they can't conceivably consider, continue to support it. I'm pretty sure I saw an image over the weekend of literally one person online yeah. on Lawbreakers on Steam. Yeah, no, they're. There hasn't been much. <laughs> I, I, I want to say the on Steam Spy when I looked, the peak concurrent for the last week was fourteen people. That sounds about right. <laughs> um, yeah, so Lawbreakers is going away, and it's a shame because, like, conceptually, that actually sounded pretty cool. And, and it, it looked the, the videos I had seen of it made it look neat. I just had no more room for a competitive shooter personally. And I mean, it's also PC only, which for me anyway yeah. makes it kind of like impossible. And depending on, like, what sort of specs it had, like, you might not have been able to do it because your computer no, a little no. older, so. Uh, but they have turned around, and they have a new game that actually uh, launched today. It, it was on PS4 as well. Oh, I didn't realize Lawbreakers yeah. had the PS4. Uh, I really don't think anybody actually ever got it on yeah. PS4. Wow. Um, whoops, whoops, whoops. But yeah, so it's, as of today, it's available on Steam Early Access. Uh, it's called Radical Heights. Yeah. It's a uh, a battle royale game. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't. I haven't really done the due diligence to me either. Watch I was like, anything. I, I had seen the news of them shutting down Lawbreakers and moving to this new thing, thinking it was going to be months away, not coming out today. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is just early access. But I mean, still, but, like uh, you can pay for it and play it right now. Yeah, and I guess there's a fifteen dollar founders pack mm-hmm. will be available to purchase at some point, which they apparently have already made a change to. Really? Yeah. So. Apparently, the way this game works is almost like Counter Strike. You earn money while, like, for getting kills or whatever. And the Founders Pack supposedly had like a money bonus for every round. And then the next game, like, you can spend that money to get better guns earlier. And they apparently took that out after people were complaining about it. Oh wow. All yeah, right. I saw that headline today, which was the only reason I knew the game was even playable, was they've already made a change to it. I was like, what? So what What the IGN article about it says, though, is it's Battle Royale, so PUBG, Fortnite sort yep. of thing. Um, it's got an 80s aesthetic, so real colorful and stuff, yeah. um, and a live game show element, and it all takes place in 2023. So it's like not super far in the future, but like just far enough that they can do some weird stuff and have it not be super far-fetched. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it goes on to say, players will battle using a variety of vehicles and weapons, including confetti bombs, inflatable decoys, and BMX bikes. You can keep the cash you earn during matches, regardless of if you win or lose, and then use those earnings on customizations, new weapons, and more. Check, and then go into the trailer. So, I mean, the cash after wins and stuff was what you were just talking about. Yeah. So, I mean, like, good for them to turn around and actually, like, have a game playable that quickly Mm -hmm. i wonder how long they've been working on that after seeing Uh, i'm gonna bet as soon as lawbreakers did not hit big at launch they started working on the new thing yeah you're probably right especially especially to have it out like what three days after they announced that lawbreakers (laughs) yeah something like that uh the, the actual full release of the game is apparently scheduled for sometime in 2019 okay but still yeah, that's still a, that. That's a pretty good turnaround. Yeah, like, good on them. Good on them for trying. Uh, and then the last news that I found, everyone should already know this, but it it, it must be talked about. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spider Man finally has a release date. September seventh. Yep, September seventh. Insomniac Spider Man. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. It looks it looks like it's going to be fun. Like Spider Man Two was fun. The on Xbox and PS Two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the movie game. Right. The. The only good Spider-Man game since PlayStation 1. <laughs> right. Um, it's got the whole open world swinging stuff that looks like it's really good. And, mm. and all the people that have gotten to play it have always have come away saying that, like, it plays well. It's fun. It's a little, a lot of the, apparently the, the scene that they have people play through is, it's pretty quick time heavy, which is similar to what we saw at the, yeah. the last E3. Was it uh, E3 or was that a uh, PSX? I think it might have been PSX now that I say that. But still, like, yeah. a little quick time heavy, but apparently it's it's that same scenario, most likely. Um, but yeah, everyone said, like, the combat's fun. It it has an Arkham feel to it, but that the combat isn't Arkham. Like, it's not just that, like, two-button combat that the Arkham games were. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I have been excited for this since that first reveal trailer. 
Yeah. And apparently there, there's a whole bunch of costumes you can get. Cool. So they already showed that you can get um, Spider-Man Noir, and there was another one, and I cannot remember what it was now. But they, I guess there's going to be some sort of way to craft costumes. Huh. Like, you're going to get stuff in the game and, like, in-game currency, and you're going to be able to use that to craft different costumes that they have. It. You're Not just, like, put things together and suddenly you have a new costume, but, you know, like, if you want it to be, you know, the black suit Venom symbiote Spider-Man, like, there would be certain items you would put together to make that suit. Okay. Weird. Which, weird, but kind of cool also. So, that's a thing. Um, uh, I'm seeing some news from today that uh, Target may have accidentally leaked the Kingdom Hearts 3 release date. What do they have listed for the date? November 1st. I mean, that wouldn't be completely out of the question. What day of the week is that? A Thursday. I mean, honestly, days of the week don't even matter anymore because games release no. in such weird yep. times at this point. But um, was, I mean, you know, it could be even like that Thursday could have been oh, like midnight, me- meaning to be the midnight of it because they've since now changed it to December 30th. But uh, who knows? We'll see. Yeah. Because like I said, they've gone back and changed it. Uh, one thing I, I forgot to mention about the Spider-Man game, actually, just to go back real quick. Um, Insomniac confirmed no microtransactions. Oh, right, right, right. So the game is going to be the game. You're not going to be able to buy stuff in the game other than, like, building out the suits with, like, stuff you collect. Which, that's cool. Like, I like the idea of n- no microtransactions because I don't want to... I, I don't want to be in that situation where if I want a certain costume, which like, I, I like the costume they have with the big white spider on it. Like, that's cool looking. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, if I... You know, if I want, like, a certain costume, like, if 1990 Scarlet Spider costume becomes available, I need that. Okay. I don't want that locked behind a paywall. Right. Because, like, I'm not going to pay extra fucking money for a costume. Like, that's stupid. But I will spend, you know, a few hours finding all the shit I need to make the costume. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, shit. There was one last um, game news that I had on this list and totally missed. Okay. Uh, Hitman oh. is going to be published by Warner Brothers now. Yeah. Man... I wonder if it's still up, because I never... I meant to go download the uh, Marrakesh, I think they put out for free. I know they put out the, something for free. Or, or maybe it was Sapienza. They put out one of the maps for free, and I meant to do it and never did. But, I mean, it'll still be IO Interactive, I believe. Yeah, I, IO is still developing. It. Yeah, okay, that, that that is on the thing I'm reading. Um, and Warner Brothers is going to be the one releasing the definitive edition all in May. Okay. So that's I'm going cool. to wait for that and buy that when that comes out, if it's a reasonable price. Yeah. I mean, I'm, it kind of has to be at this yeah. point, right? Because that wasn't... Was, was that a $60 game to begin with, or was it 50 I don't remember, because I'm pretty sure it was episodic. It, no, it definitely was, but you can normally buy them all together. Well, they didn't put out, like, a physical co- edition until way later. Oh, yeah. And then I don't remember if you could buy, like... If there was, like, a season pass version to buy, or how they did the pricing on that game originally. There definitely was a season pass, and I, I just don't remember what the cost was. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's awesome, because that, especially having, like, Warner Brothers as the publisher, like, assuming, like, they they don't get too invested in it and start trying to make changes, mm-hmm. um, that means IO can just do what they did and make another game like that, but hopefully better. Yeah. And then you have the backing of a giant company to help you distribute it. Mm-hmm. So... I guess we'll see, though. Uh, it's, I'm sure it's going to be a while before we see a sequel to Hitman, because they're... I think, didn't they just release content at the end of the year? Uh, Yes, they did something, but I feel like it was just kind of like a reskin on one yeah, of the yeah. maps. Yeah, it wasn't like, like a brand new map or anything like that, but they definitely did something. Yeah. Um, did you have any other news? Uh, there's a Jackbox Party Pack 5 coming this year. That's expected. Yeah. Uh, are, those the, are those the annual or... I feel like they've been more more frequent than that, to be honest. But maybe not. I don't know. I mean, but when, close to it. If when did not. PS4 come out? Twenty thirteen. Thir- yeah. No, that would make them about annual then, because yeah. the okay. first one yeah. came out right around the launch of the PS4. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I agree though. It almost feels like they come out more frequently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's four more episodes of Final Fantasy 15 stuff coming out up through 2019. <sighs> Why? Because, like, just give us Final Fantasy 16 and crush everybody's hopes with that after a 15 year development cycle. Like, I mean, Final Fantasy 15 wasn't that bad. Like, I, I had a mostly enjoyable time going through it. It just, it didn't feel like a Final Fantasy for most of it. And like the few times it did, 
it lost itself fairly quickly after, which is, uh, I don't know. Uh, they're character focused episodes. Uh, they, they have names and descriptions and all for them. What are the names? So episode one is Arden. It's episode one, Arden, the conflict of the sage. And then episode side story, Ar- Aranea. Okay. Uh, the beginning of the end. Episode two, Luna Freya, the choice of freedom. And episode three, Noctis, the final strike. I feel like the Arden one had actually been announced a while ago, unless this is another Arden one. Uh, I mean, this could be the same one, and just as part of, like, flushing out their whole details, they've given more for more detail on that one. Yeah. Because this came out of uh, Square Enix panel at PAX. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. Um, and, like, it's a shame, because, like, it's stuff like that where I am actually kind of interested in the, uh, in that sort of thing. Because, like, they did some cool stuff with characters. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it was like, I don't know, it was missing something. They're also adding two more updates to, uh, Comrades, the online multiplayer mode, with, uh, first one being in the summer... And around that time, apparently, they're going to re- release the multiplayer as a standalone thing. Okay. And then a second update in the winter. And apparently, the PC version is getting a level editor where they showed off a golf game that they made inside the level editor for Final Fantasy Fifteen. Okay, then. So, yeah. Square's getting weird with that game. Yeah, they are. I feel like they spent so much time making it that they can't just let it go. Like, they're, they're just trying to dump as much as they can into it because of how much time they spent with it. But, like, at the same time, like, I can't... I already spent 60 bucks on that game. Mm-hmm. I can't justify spending another 40, 50, 60 bucks for, like, all the DLC. Yeah, no. So, I mean, at this point, like, I don't... So, if you bought the, the season pass, that season's already done at this point. So you'd have to spend another 20, 25 bucks on another season. And mm-hmm. you like calculate tax and all into that, you're spending another 60 bucks. Yeah. Like, that's absurd. A little bit. Like, that game is not a $120 game, no matter how much they add to it. Um, anything else? Uh, no. Nothing else, really. Uh, well, let's move on. Uh, what have you been up to? Uh, watched a lot of wrestling this weekend. Did you watch all 17 hours of WrestleMania? D- yep. That's watched a- all of WrestleMania, watched NXT TakeOver. That's rough. Didn't watch any of the other wrestling that happened. Isn't th- But could have. Isn't the a- other stuff the better stuff, though? Well, like, That's always the impression I've gotten between you and the internet. It, TakeOver was better than WrestleMania. WrestleMania was, I thought this year was the first year in a while where it would have been better than TakeOver. And it just it disappointed. That's the impression I got from mostly Sean Appleton. Yeah. Um, cause he's very vocal about it on Facebook. Yeah. If but, I was just sitting at home watching, I would be posting a lot more, but I'm at a party with people. So I'm, my phone's usually just in my pocket while yeah. watching the main pay-per-views. Yeah. But like even like other people on yeah. Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that, I saw them like talking about it and it was one of those, like, this was really good, but then all of this was garbage. Yeah. The, like I, it, it definitely had moments and had cool stuff, but also a lot of disappointment. Isn't that like all of WWE at this point? Kind of, except for the like takeover the night before was 3 hours that was basically consistent the whole way with the exception of one match, but is that the one part match that was like incredibly Vince doesn't have access to yeah. though? Yeah, he doesn't apparently doesn't do a whole lot with NXT, so it kind of goes to show like hmm, he is the reason that it's bad. Yeah. Maybe you don't quite understand what people want anymore, Vince. I mean, that's because mm-hmm. what didn't um I saw what's his face still won right um Did, Brock yeah, Lesnar Lesnar won so, like d- doesn't he only wrestle like twice a year like, yeah isn't it just WrestleMania Pretty and like much. one other pay per view yeah. I I want to say it, w- he wrestled like f- he's had the title since WrestleMania last year and I think wrestled four matches in between like every three once every three months he shows up murders someone and then goes away for three months. I saw. I did see something weird. It might have been on Twitter that I guess they're they're go. Actually, I think Sean might have shared it. Actually, now that I really think about Probably. it, probably. Um, they're gonna go to the Saudi Arabia yeah, and have yeah. like a pay per view. They've announced that. They announced that a while ago. Um, they're doing a fifty man Royal Rumble. Yeah, that's that's what I saw that that it's being called like the greatest, greatest Royal, Royal Rumble. Rumble. Yeah. 
which I feel like that was just like marketing that they had to do to like have the event in the country. Prob- probably. Um but yeah, like Lesnar resigned and they're having another Lesnar versus Reigns match cuz that's what everybody wants to see. Like who would you rather see? It's just, um I don't, I probably won't know who you're talking about, but I'm just curious. A- uh, anyone. I mean so this like, dude Braun Strowman. I meant like who would you rather see go against Lesnar? The, uh this Probably Braun Strowman. Is he the big guy that's always on, like, in the in the pictures, like, knocking over stages and stuff? Yeah, yeah. He just... He's <laughs> actually attempted murdered, like, half of his co-workers. Dude, he was the, the... He survived being put into a trash truck. Jesus. Yeah. So, at one of the pay-per-views, like, it was, like, an eight-man match or whatever, and they all throw him in the back of a trash truck and turn it on... And the crowd just starts chanting, that was murder. <laughs> and it was maybe the, like, most appropriate chant ever. <laughs> like, yeah, no, if that was real, you just killed this guy. Yeah. You put him in the back of a trash truck and turned it on. Like, yeah, that's, well, I mean, they've always had, like, the death gimmicks, too. Yeah, like, yeah. between Undertaker and Kane. Like, hasn't Kane actually been, like, I'm like sure. put in a co- in a coffin and set on fire before. Yeah, like, yeah. But, but but that was when, but when it was like cartoons, and now it's like real. And that was murder. <laughs> oh, have they dropped a lot of that? Like, yeah, it's not the top as... gimmicky stuff. Oh, yeah, like yeah. with vampires and superheroes. I mean, every and... once in a while, you still get like kind of a cartoony character, but not really. Not really since like the late nineties. Did you get? Wow, the... really? Yeah. Like, Undertaker is, like, the last one of that kind of gimmick, really. Although, like, there's this guy, Velveteen Dream, in NXT right now, who's, like, if you merged Prince and Freddie Mercury, maybe? Like, That's definitely weird. definitely Prince-inspired, but... White guy? No, black guy. Okay. Black guy. Well, I, I, when you said so Freddie who, Mercury, that's maybe why, that's uh, why I uh, thought you just, were getting that. Like, a little more androgynous than Prince. Okay. Like... Uh, like, his last feud was with this one dude, Alistair Black, who was, like, this death metal dude. <laughs> He's this death metal Dutch guy with covered in tattoos, and his whole gimmick was, or the whole thing was trying to get Alistair Black to say his name, because he wouldn't. And so just, like, the whole match, he's fighting him, and he's just, like, yelling, say my name, Adam, and eventually gets kicked in the head and loses, but... Nice. I mean, I don't, I don't know. That was always the fun part of wrestling was like the cartoony, like over the top characters that, cause I mean, that, that was the whole point. Like they were supposed to be larger than life. They, they were supposed to be able to fall off of like the top of a steel cage and get back up because they're well, not just a normal person. So, but now it's like, oh, hey, this guy with just a name just fell off a thing and got back up. <laughs> Damn. I mean, that's less impressive. Eh. I mean, it's not so much like it's less impressive. It's, I don't know. At the, the that seems more dangerous. Yeah. Like, in, like, in, like, the wrong way. I mean, instead, like, instead of this trash man st- wrestling a dude, it's two guys having an athletic competition. But, really, I, like... And you know what, like, if, if it was, if wrestling was actually focused on the actual sports part of it and less on the bad entertainment part of it, it would be different. But, like, I feel like, going from, like, what I know of, like, 90s wrestling, like... The feuds and like the characters and everything like like that's that's what you wanted to see. You wanted to see like two big characters clashing like in promos and then have that eventually lead to like a big match somewhere. And if like everyone's just like and I realize like they're they're all still in like a character mm-hmm. one way or another, but like if they're just playing like you know random dude number one and random dude number two and one's a bad bad guy and one's a good guy it. Well, I mean, they still, you know, everyone still has characters, just not actual literal, like, jobs. (laughs) Like, like in the early 90s, before, like, the Attitude Era, like, everyone had a job. Their gimmick was a job. There was a clown. There was a garbage man. There was... That's true. I didn't didn't really think about it like that. a cop. There was a Canadian cop. There was a repo man. Wait, was there a Mountie? Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah, his name was the Mountie. I'm pretty sure one of his main feuds was against the big boss man. Nice. Who was the, the cop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, then, like, once the NWO and, like, Stone Cold and The Rock, like, that's when it started to get away from character characters and ter- turned into 
Dwayne Johnson turned up to 11 kind of characters. But, like, that character worked. Yeah. I mean, I have seen clips of that now, and, like, it doesn't work at all. Like, that character does not work anymore. No. But, like, at this point, he's just The Rock. Like, he can literally just do and say whatever he wants. But, like, to your point, like, the reason NXT and things like Ring of Honor and New Japan are so popular now is it's almost a real fight. Like, there are storylines between the people, but it's mostly... I think I'm better than you. I want your championship. Let's fight for it. And like, you know, the matches are still predetermined, but you're now, you're watching it for the matches and less the arguments that are happening between the people in between. I mean, do do they, when you watch like the the Japan wrestling, do they translate the um, Uh, the promos and stuff like that? uh, Or at least subtitle it? So there will be subtitles on uh, the New Japan stuff. Although, I mean, there's so many English speakers over there now that... Do they not speak in Japanese? Oh, no. I mean, like, Chris Jericho, when he went over there, was just... I mean... Speaking in English. That I figured, but, like, the... Because aren't there, like, a lot of guys who, like, that's just where they're at? Yeah, so, like, Kenny Omega, when he does a promo, a lot of times will speak in Japanese. Or, like, do a bit in English, do a bit in Japanese, and go back and forth. But, like... There are a lot of them that know no Japanese, really. Like, they can get around, but... They couldn't they get on the mic yeah. and actually, like, read their script, basically. Yeah. They might be able to say a sentence or two that they prepared specifically for that promo, but wouldn't be able to hold a conversation. But, like, when the Japanese yeah, people they'll, actually they'll, are talking... Because it's tape-delayed, The a lot of what... Oh, do you actually, like, can you actually watch it live? So they have a subscription service like WWE has now. So for a lot of their big events, you can watch live. Like Wrestle Kingdom, you could watch live at like four in the morning US time. I almost did it, but it was a Thursday. If it was a Friday, I would have probably taken the day off. I guess and, for them, it is a Friday. Yeah. I think it was, well, I think it was still Thursday because it, it was the Oh, four, yeah. So it would have been like, Five yeah, at it, night it, or whatever. Yeah, it was started at like 6 p.m., 5 or 6 p.m., but that was 4 in the morning. Here. Yeah. Because 13 hour time difference or whatever. Yeah. But, but yeah. Uh, and then like uh, Access TV airs on Friday nights. They air a one hour block of, or Friday or Saturday, I forget. They air a one hour block of stuff from the last big event or whatever, but it'll be like two or three weeks behind and redone with american commentators on there so like when you watch it on like the app are they japanese commentators or do they uh, have so, uh some they have english commentary some they don't well cause i know like the, i know like the the big joke in like wwe is whenever someone goes through the announce table it's always the spanish announce yeah. table so i didn't know if they just had like american announcers there no, they do they do for some of them like wrestle kingdom they do the sakura genesis was their last one they had english announcers there and a lot of times they wind up going through the English announced table <laughs> if anyone gets put through a table. Sounds Although Japanese right. tables are weird. Like they're like the tables you'll see in American wrestling are like basically this table but wood. Yeah. In the Japanese ones, they're like these narrow, real thick wood. Oh. And it's like the American tables like easily fit a person on them. The these Japanese tables like look like you barely fit on it. It's this real narrow table. It's weird. But yeah, so a lot of wrestling happened, and it was fine. <laughs> and then uh, I've played a lot of Trackmania Turbo, because that was a free PS Plus game this month. Oh yeah, it was, wasn't it? So I've been playing through the campaign stuff to unlock I didn't know Trackmania terms. had a campaign. Yeah, I mean, it, it's pre-built levels. That's, just, that's the time trials, basically, yeah. right? So it's pre-built levels... Here's a time for a bronze medal, here's a time for silver, here's a time for gold. And the more gold medals you get, the more custom customization things you unlock for the cars. Because that's the one where you actually get to see yourself, like... Yeah. Like, you get to see the Shadow Racer, basically, yeah, yeah. right? So, like, when you first go onto a, a, a track, you can pick which medal you want to challenge for. Why you don't wouldn't pick just gold, I don't know. But, say, you pick the gold medal one... You start and you'll see a gold medal ghost that you can race against. And then if you finish a lap or whatever and 
don't get the gold medal and try it again, you'll see the gold medal and your ghost and then your car. Okay. That's kind of cool. Yeah. It's neat. I like I, I've seen different places play that game and they, they yeah. always look pretty cool. It's it's like, a fun at game. At least if you want to race. Yeah. Cuz you know, and then the online multiplayer is, you know, up to 100 people in a race, but it's all you're all ghosts. You can't actually make contact with anyone. Yeah, but you're you're base you're still racing other people's yeah, times. Yeah. And so you're live racing people's times and there's a leaderboard and you'll see what place you're in when you finished. Yeah, so that's the one I've seen a bunch of, and like the when you when you peel out, every, it's because everyone's just kind of stacked on you, and everyone mm-hmm. just kind of like yeah. splinters. It's real weird looking. It's fun. There's and like there's different types of tracks which have different cars which all handle differently. So it's neat. I like it. It's definitely good to have as a thing. Like, uh, I've got five minutes to kill. I can run a track or two on yeah. Trackmania. And then I got an ending in Kingsway. <laughs> uh, so Kingsway is the Windows 95, the RPG. Okay, I've heard of that. Um, so it's like an old school RPG. You, uh, it's also a ro- like a roguelike. Okay. It probably is a like roguelike like, cause after every run, you unlock, you earn gems that can unlock you bonuses at the start. But, and also unlocks, uh, like, hotkeys. Like, you unlock the ability to tab through the windows in the in the game, or just push escape to close all the windows you can close. But, uh, so, you know, you'll start in a town, you get a quest. Uh, I mean, the quest is to light the torches and go find the king. And, uh, as you travel, for, like, you pick a destination on the world map, and it just travels, you might get inter- interrupted with a random battle. And, you know, you'll have, I think you have five skills you can set. There's, like, attack, defend, uh, and then three unlockable, or, well, two empty spaces and escape, but you can swap out any of the skills. Okay. Um, so when you hit, uh, there are timer bars, so you'll see there the enemy attack charging up, and when you click any of your abilities, your bar fills up. So you might want to time the defend as their bar is about to fill block half like halves or thirds the damage and then unblock and hit the attack and go back and forth doing that okay that actually sounds a little bit like um that game coming to switch um octopath traveler okay it had a similar so, like well, combat system so where... the thing with it though is like it's windows it looks like old school windows windows and the enemy will like pop up and their thing might be moving around the screen, so you're trying to click the things while it's moving around on you. Oh, that's kind of cool. And depending on the type of enemy, like, it will move differently. So, like, there's one that's just this plant thing that its attack is when the bar fills up, two things start moving across the screen, and you have to hit avo- click the avoid button on each of them, or they'll hit you and poison you. Oh, wow. But after you hit the, both the avoids, the window is still the entire time until it attacks. Then it moves to a completely different spot in the screen. So you have to go move and actively click on the attack button to keep attacking. It's, there's no auto attack. Yeah, that sounds. Um, that sounds like it could get complicated. Yeah, certain enemies will like spawn other enemies, and now you have multiple windows open with multiple enemies that have t- attack bars filling up at different rates, That's and cool. gets pretty hectic. It's neat. It was free on Twitch Prime. It probably runs on fucking anything. Yeah, I, just, I looked it up. Apparently it came out in July. Yeah, for it some came reason, out last year. I remember I remember the name, and for some reason I thought, like, not old, old, but I thought no. it was, like, at least, like, three or four years old. No, it just looks like it's old. Yeah, the, like, yeah, I, I totally thought that game came out in, like, 2015 or something, but I was wrong. Yeah. But, yeah, I got an ending. I think there are multiple endings. Okay. So, I'll probably play more of it. Cool. Yeah, anything else? Uh, no, I played a bunch of NHL yesterday. That's about it. I haven't gotten back into Nier at all? No. You should do that. Yeah. That game's fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, I watched some stuff. Yeah. Um, you're not going to care, but the the finale for Tom- Legends of Tomorrow. Okay. Really good finale for. All right. Like that show. It, this season, that show has probably been like the best of the CW shows. 
Um, and it had a really good finale. It brought back a bunch of characters as, like, nice little, like... It was one of those, um, like, feel-good moments when it's, like, they needed help and, like, all these characters that had, like, been around before, like, okay. came to help them sort of thing. Cool. Including one of the main characters that had left the show um, after the um, the crossover. All right. Um, and then um, I also watched uh, the Persona 5 anime. Oh. Well, I watched the first episode of okay. it. Okay. Um, I saw that it came out and I was curious to see, like, how it was. Um, I'm not realizing, or not, like, thinking about it, that it was only releasing weekly. So, just the first episode was out to watch. Fun. Um, <laughs> it is basically just the, the beginning of the game. Okay. Like, it, it's the first hour or so of the game in 20 minutes. Um, the, it was cool, though, because, and I, I, I played the game with the English voice actors. Right. But all the Japanese voice actors, I guess, I'm, ass, I'm assuming they're the same ones that did the voices in the game. Be weird if it's not, but um, it would also not be 100% surprising. Yeah. But it, the thing that I, that I thought was cool was a lot of the Japanese voices sound similar in, like, tone and stuff to okay. the English voice cast, which, you know, like, that's cool that they, they matched them up like that. Because um, definitely not always the case. No, no, not at all. Um, but it had, like, some of the music from the game playing at certain points. When uh, when the main character first gets into town, he uh, he looks at his phone, and he, I guess he's, excuse me, he's trying to find out which train station to go to. Okay. And it actually, like, goes to the pick a train location, like, quick travel screen uh, from the game for a second and, like, shows the line go to, like, his destination, which I thought was neat. Nice. But otherwise, it was, like, beat for beat the beginning of the game, like, which isn't a bad thing. Yeah. Um, there was, like, a super big spoiler right up front, though. Oh. <laughs> um, which wasn't in the game. Huh. You, they, he is shrouded in, like, shadows, but it's very obvious if you are, if you started watching this before you finished the game, that you now know who one of the big bads are. Ah. Uh, if, if, if you paid attention. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, like, it, it makes it obvious once you get to that point in the show, I'm sure, that you're not gonna realize he's a bad guy, and he's actually a bad guy. So, that was kind of a bummer, but otherwise, like, it, it was good. I, I enjoyed the 24 minutes of it. Um, I kind of wish it was in English because then I could have watched it and done other things. Mm-hmm. But instead, I had to just pay attention because I had to read. Oh, God forbid you pay attention to the show you're watching. I mean, I usually do, but I'm 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 watching it like at work, basically. Okay. So like, I occasionally have to like respond to an email, and if I can just like listen to people talking, it makes it easier. Um. So that said, I also started watching that show. Richie kept talking about My Hero Academia. Okay. It, it came up as recommended after I watched the episode on Hulu. So I, I watched, like, the first, like, four or five episodes of it. It's an interesting show. <laughs> um, I, I don't... At least in those first few episodes, I don't see why everyone is so, like, like amped up for this show. Because it's not that good. But it's interesting. Like, it's... The world is full of superheroes. <laughs> so it's basically a comic book. Like, ever, apparently 98% or something like that of the population are born with powers after something weird happened. Nice. And, like, some people have cool powers, other people have lame powers, and 2% of the population have no powers. The lamest power of all. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, the the show is basically about the kid that has no power but wants to be a hero. And okay. Because he wants to be a hero enough, he gets a power. <laughs> like, spoilers. But I think that I think that that's the first season. I think season three is coming out or something like that, so... I guess if you haven't watched that yet, like, <laughs> you're a few years behind anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'll probably at least finish the season just to see where that goes. I don't know if I'll care enough to keep up with it after that. I also, I went to a Toys R Us every week. I went to two Toys R Us, actually, oh. every weekend. Um, Erica and I decided to go on sat on Saturday. We went to the one in Deptford. Uh-huh. And then we randomly decided to go to King of Prussia. <laughs> okay. And, like, when we got out to King of Prussia, I'm just like, hey, there's a Toys R Us over here. We should go check that one out, too. Uh-huh. Um... At least in our area, they're not really discounting stuff too bad yet. Yeah, um, when we went to the one over here in Deptford a couple weeks ago, it was only like 10%. It's up to 30 now, but basically everything is still 10. I only saw two aisles with anything marked for 30, okay. and it was like stuffed animals. So uh, it's like game consoles and Legos are only 5%, and like games and basically everything else are 10%. Yeah. Um, one thing that might interest you guys, though, um, at least the one in Deptford had a bunch of drop mix booster packs. Yeah, w- that's where we got s- some of the ones that we got. Okay, I didn't know. Well, actually, would... well, that's where we got the booster packs that we got. Yeah, because they had they had a bunch of them and they were ten percent off, yeah. which makes them cheaper. So. Yeah, we'll go back once like that hits more off. Yeah, to yeah. get more of the boosters. Yeah, th- there's some stuff that it if it if it is there when they start like 
going higher percent, I'll probably pick up. Yeah. But it, like at the moment, there's just there's nothing that I need enough to buy to buy it really. Mm-hmm. Like ten percent isn't that big of a discount. And like it sucks. Like I get it. Liquidation sucks. I've been through it. But at the same time, like I'm not causing the employees any grief by like bitching at them. I'm just looking to see if anything has a good deal or not. Yep. Um. But other than that, the only game I played was um I played Chrono Trigger. Okay. Which I have I have never played all the way through. I have not either. Um. But people always talk about how great it is. Mm-hmm. And I, I started it a couple of times, and I've never gotten more than like thirty minutes into it. I got a little bit further than that, but not by much. I basically travel to the past, and then that's as far as I get. All right, maybe that's about as far as I've gotten. Yeah, that sounds... Because, like, the game opens up, and you go to a little festival, and you run around with the girl. Right. And then you can eventually go up to, the like, the top of the festival, and your your friend and her dad are doing, like, their experiment with the teleporting pad. And they teleport you from one pad to the other, and then the girl goes to teleport, and her her pendant reacts weird and sends her into the past. Okay, I remember that. And then Chrono, your character, decides to go follow her. Right. And that's about as far as I ever get. Like, I run around the past a little bit. I usually run up to the castle, which is, like, the castle where, like, you find the girl. Um, and that's about it. But this time, I, I, I played for about two hours. Okay. Um, I am in- What are you playing on? The DS version? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I've had that for years. Yeah. And it's one of those things, like, I bought it when it came out in, like, 2008. Yeah. And it's just one of those games where, like, I'll pick it up, and I'll play a little bit of it, and then I'll put it down, and I'll forget about it. And by the time I remember, it's like, I don't remember how I got here. It's only been 30 minutes, but I don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Let me just start over. It's only been 30 minutes. And at least now, like, I'm a, I am far enough in now to warrant, like, maybe I'll keep going. All right. And yeah. I, cause I do want to... S- People always say how great this game is, and like I feel like it's like this missing chunk of like gaming. Mm-hmm. That I just I just want to see what it's all about. It's kind of like Final Fantasy VI. Like I have a save of that going too, and I'm like four or five hours in, and it's just it for some reason like those two games have just never been able to hold my attention. And it doesn't have to do with age because my favorite Final Fantasy is four. Mm-hmm. Like I'll play four backwards and forwards. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping to get through this probably slowly, but eventually. Um. I'm trying to think if there was anything else, really. Like I said, at Arrow was okay. Um, like the, there's a whole bunch of television. Um, but like none of the TV shows are that great right now. Like Walking Dead is super fucking boring. Like, yeah, that's all I've been hearing about. Like I, the new season. I space out of it basically every episode. Yeah, I loved that show at first, and then I tailed off super hard. Yeah, well, like, actually, that's not really super hard. Like fourth season, maybe it's when I tailed off. Yeah, and like this season could have been better if they didn't try and stretch all out war through the whole sixteen episodes. It mm-hmm. should have only been the first half. Like it should it should have been front loaded and then transition into something else in the second half. Instead, they just they they've drugged the whole. Like t- this coming Sunday is the finale, and they have not come up with any kind of solution yet. And the the way it's set up, like I'm not so sure that it's going to end by the end of this episode because it's it's not a long episode. It's only sixty minutes. So, like, normally, like, the finales, they'll run longer, but they're running um, Walking Dead, and then they're going right into the premiere of Fear of the Walking Dead. Okay. So, it's two hours of Walking Dead, but it's really only one hour per show. But I guess we'll find out. I'm kind of glad that it's going to be over, because I, I don't care about Fear of the Walking Dead at all. Like, Oh, no, no. no. I, season six is where we bounced off. Okay. Walking Dead. So, actually, not that long ago, really. No, yeah. Um, I mean, it's still three years. Yeah. <laughs> but well, Almost, yeah. Uh, but uh, Fear, I just I don't like any of the characters in Fear of the Walking Dead. We watched like the first two episodes of Fear of the Walking Dead, and we're like, this is no. Like Erica likes it enough that like we watch it, but it's one of those things where I am not even a little concerned about like reading comics or playing on my DS or something while she's watching that, and just kind of like having a, a an idea of what's happening, but not having to pay attention to all the shitty characters because mm-hmm. they really are like every character in yeah. that show sucks. No. Um, and it, like, it's the end of the point where, like, almost every character in The Walking Dead sucks. Like, n- nobody's compelling to watch anymore. And, like, the people that used to be compelling are just super shitty now. And it's, it's a shame. Cause, like, the comics still are actually really good. Like, the comics yeah. keep, still keep doing interesting things. That's cool. And I feel like the show is just running it so slow so that it doesn't catch up to the comic that it's hurting itself. But, what are you gonna do? Yep. Um, but yeah, that's it. So, uh, Oh, you know what? We before we go, we we bought a couple new board games. Oh, okay. Um, I don't. We bought one called Rorschach. All right. 
Uh, we went to Tiki Tiki on Sunday. Right. Okay, cool. Um, and Erica has like the discount card thing. Oh, so yeah, yeah, a, yeah. We picked up three games um, used. One of them, it was called Rorschach. Um, it's Rorschach Blots. Okay. So it's apparently, it's it's in the vein of like Apples to Apples or Cards Against Humanity. Okay. Where you you put down a bunch of these Rorsch- Rorschach Blots. Mm-hmm. And then you have to put down like a, or I'm sorry, you don't put down, you the person who like picked them out picks like one card and then picks what like their interpretation of it is and like keeps it a secret. Okay. And then everybody else shouts out at the same time what their interpretation of the card is. Hmm. And whoever is closest or like exact as the um the the person who is okay. it um the person who is it takes one of their colored token. And then if nobody gets the same thing as you, you get one of your own colored tokens. Hmm. And you basically go around in a circle and the first person to have one of every color okay. wins. Hmm. So it's like a quick ish party game. Yeah. That like doesn't really require a whole lot. Um, and then we got one called Winter's Tale or Winter Tales. Let me look just so I can make sure I have the name right. Um, it's a storytelling game though, mm-hmm. which th- that's kind of like we saw it. The box was kind of neat looking. We read the back. We're like, oh, that sounds actually kind of cool. Uh, Winter Tales, T A L E S. Right. Um, so like the the synopsis for it is uh, following the victory in the conflict of autumn, the regime of winter has clutched the land of fairy tales in its cold grasp. Hmm. Fueled by hate and fear, winter aims at extinguishing the flame of love and the light of hope under a blanket of snow and the never-ending chill of a winter night. In the winding alleys and the small houses desperately clinging to the hillside of Wintertown, frightened tales move in the shadows, knowing they cannot allow all hope for the future to be snuffed out by the cold and ready... Snuffed out by the cold and ready to fight to drive winter away and let spring come again. In Winter Tales, a storytelling board game, players tell the con- tell the tale of the conflict between the characters of the fairy tales who represent all that is good and hopeful and the soldiers of winter who incarnate evil and the fierce cold of winter. Players will, w- players will ally themselves with one of the warring factions, controlling characters and fighting for the comeback of spring or the suffocation of all hope, bringing on an endless winter. Winter Tales is an ever-changing game as each time the players will tell a completely different story creating a shared plot. Hmm. Yeah. It's like, it's three to seven players and it takes about an hour and a half according to Board Game Geek. Okay. So like, it just, it was one of those games where like, we were looking around and like, it wasn't super expensive, it looked interesting and it had an interesting concept. So we were just like, let's, let's get it. Why not? Because we were looking at um Tales at, or Betrayal at House on the Hill. Right. But, like, the used copy there was more expensive than a new copy on Amazon. Uh. <laughs> and I think that's just because, like, Amazon just had a cheaper price at that time. Okay. Um, But, like, neither of the boxes looked in great condition. So, we're like, let's not get this. Because it was $45. Yeah. Like, let's just get, like, other stuff. And the last thing we got was just um a, another pack of Munchkin cards. We got uh, Munchkin Bites. Okay. The vampire, the vampire monster one. movie sort of one. Yeah. Um, I, I want it Cthulhu. Cause apparently, Cthulhu adds like a madness. Oh man, that would be cool. Yeah, um, but I, I should play more Darkest Dungeon. Darkest Dungeon's so fucking cool. I keep. I've been meaning to go play that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we were at in the King of Prussia Mall. There's that weird like hobby shop. Um. You know where the di- where Ruby's Diner used to be? Yes. It's not it's there a, anymore. It's a far place. Yeah. Now. We yeah. ate there. It's actually pretty good. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I know where you went in then. Yeah. Because we were there like a month or so. Yeah. Ago. That's where we. All, that's where I always go in. Cause okay. I, I, that's basically like one end of the mall, and I know on like, the second floor. You're talking about the places. Yeah. Like so, if you come in there and you head hang left and you just go straight back, there's like that weird hobby game shop. Um. And it sells, like, a bunch of board games and then, like, other just weird stuff. It has, like, some Legos in there and, like, weird, like, souvenir Like There are, like, a couple arcade machines in there? There weren't when I was oh, in there. Oh, wait. Maybe it's a different store. This was a very big store. Um, And, like, the left half was all, like, board games and the, then the right half was all, like, stuff that you'd expect to see in a GameStop. Like, Think Geek stuff, but not actually Think Geek stuff. Okay. If that makes sense. Um, but they, they had a bunch of Munchkin stuff and we were looking there and one of the guys working came over and he's like, if you're looking at these, I recommend Cthulhu. It's got this weird madness thing going on with it mm. where like, depending on how you play it, you might go crazy. I'm like, that sounds cool, but this says it's $25. I don't want a $25 deck of cards. <laughs> so we were hoping that Tiki would have it used and like all, 
the the ones that they had, they had probably like ten boxes of used cards. They were all fifteen or less. Okay. And like I was opening some of them up, and all the cards looked to be in good condition. So doesn't seem like a bad bad idea. No. Um. But yeah, I'll probably I'll probably get that Cthulhu one at some point. Like I'm sure I'll find it like on Amazon or at another store a little bit cheaper. Yeah. Because the King of Prussia malls have always got. Because it it's not like I don't know if I don't know if those games have the like msrp value written on them but this was like an actual sticker price from the store so it is what it is yeah um but yeah so i guess that'll be the show then yeah well thanks for listening uh you can find us all over the internet you can go over to www.one-quest.com for just more of our content are you guys going to do another wrestling report i think soon? we are going to this weekend okay probably sunday kind of a wrestlemania weekend recap yeah. sort of deal yeah <laughs> Recap the weekend. Recap what happened uh, last night and tonight. Right, because the, the, it's basically like Friday to Tuesday. Right? Although, yeah, yeah, it was Friday because to Tuesday. Yeah, we might actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, we might wait till next week because they're doing their superstar shakeup next week and moving people from Raw to SmackDown and SmackDown to Raw. So it might make sense to wait for that to happen to have even more to talk about. Yeah, that's fair. So, w- but in the next couple ne- of weeks, either this weekend or ne- this week or next, there will be more wrestling. All right. Um, where was oh www one quest dot com for all that fun stuff. Yep. Uh, we are on social media. You can find us. Uh, Facebook is facebook dot com slash one quest online. Twitter we are at one underscore quest. Instagram we are at one underscore quest. Yep. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. YouTube got dot com slash one quest video. You can find all of our podcasts, just like this one, on all your favorite podcasting platforms like iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Spotify, um, or just whatever app you might use. I like Podcast Addict. Yep. Uh, did I miss anything? I feel like I missed something. I don't uh, P- oh. Patreon? Yeah. Um, you, <laughs> I said at the beginning, I'll say it again. You can always support us over on Patreon. We are patreon.com slash onequest. Any little bit will help. And you can always send us messages, social at one-quest.com. Yeah. And that'll do it for today. Uh, We'll be back next week, maybe with Richie, if he decides to show up again. Um, Otherwise, yeah, thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.